Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to my evening news report right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. Take a look at these two photos right here. He endangers our democracy, Democrats say, as they unveil articles of impeachment against President Trump. House Democrats announced two articles of an impeachment Tuesday against President Donald Trump. Abuse of power and obstruction of Congress, pushing toward historic votes over charges he threatened the integrity of the U.S. election system and endangering national security in his dealings with Ukraine. Speaker Nancy Pelosi, flanked by the Chairman of Impeachment Inquiry Committees, declared at the U.S. Capitol that they were upholding their solemn oath to defend the Constitution. Voting is expected in a matter of days in the Tradition Committee and by Christmas in the full house. Let's take a listen to some of this video right now from earlier today. We're back celebrating the holidays. And our new Volvo showrooms in Nashua, Concord, and Meredith. Right now at Lovering Volvo, your first payment is on us, in addition to saving up to $14,000 off select 2019 models. Call or visit us today. Good morning, everyone. On this solemn day, I'm, I recall that the first order of business for members of Congress is the solemn act take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. With great respect and gratitude uh, that I thank uh, the chairs of the committees, the six committees who have been working to help us honor our oath of office. I also want to thank the staff of those committees and the committee members uh, for all of their work over this period of time to help us protect and defend. I want to thank the Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Mr. Nadler, Chair of the Intelligence Committee, Mr. Schiff, uh, Chair of the Ways and Means Committee, Chairman, all of these chairmen, uh, Chairman Richie Neal of Massachusetts, the Chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Elliot Engel of New York, the Chair of the Financial Services Committee, Maxine Waters of California, uh, the Chair of the uh, Committee on Government Reform and Oversight, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. I also want to acknowledge the important work that was done by our dear and departed, may rest in peace, Elijah Cummings as chair of the, of the Oversight Committee. Now pleased to yield to the distinguished chair of the Judiciary Committee, Mr. Nava. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Over the last several months, the investigative committees of the House have been engaged in an impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump's efforts to solicit foreign interference in the 2020 elections, efforts that compromised our national security and threatened the integrity of our elections. Throughout this inquiry, he has attempted to conceal the evidence from Congress and from the American people. Our president holds the ultimate public trust. When he betrays that trust and puts himself before country, he endangers the Constitution, he endangers our democracy, and he endangers our national security. The framers of the Constitution prescribed a clear remedy for presidents who so violate their oath of office. That is the power of impeachment. Today, 
in service to our duty to the Constitution and to our country. The House Committee on the Judiciary is introducing two articles of impeachment charging the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, with committing high crimes and misdemeanors. The first article is for abuse of power. It is an impeachable offense for the President to exercise the powers of his public office to obtain an improper personal benefit while ignoring or in injuring the national interest. That is exactly what President Trump did when he solicited and pressured Ukraine to interfere in our 2020 presidential election, thus damaging our national security, undermining the integrity of the next election, and violating his oath to the American people. These actions, moreover, are consistent with President Trump's previous invitations of foreign interference in our 2016 presidential election. And when he was caught, when the House investigated and opened an impeachment inquiry, President Trump engaged in unprecedented, categorical, and indiscriminate defiance of the impeachment inquiry. This gives rise to the second article of impeachment for obstruction of Congress. Here, too, we see a familiar pattern in President Trump's misconduct. A president who declares himself above accountability, above the American people, and above Congress's power of impeachment, which is meant to protect against threats to our democratic institutions, is a president who sees himself as above the law. We must be clear, no one, not even the president, is above the law. I want to recognize the great contributions of the investigative chairs particularly Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff, Foreign Affairs Chairman Elliot Engel, Committee on Oversight and Reform's former chairman, the late Elijah Cummings, and its new chairwoman, Carolyn Maloney, Financial Services Chairwoman Maxine Waters, and Ways and Means Chairman Richard Neal, who helped lay the foundation for the articles we are introducing today. I also want to thank my Judiciary C Committee colleagues who are critical in our work to hold the President accountable and in the drafting of these articles. Later this week, the Judiciary Committee will meet to consider these articles of impeachment and to make a recommendation to the full House of Representatives. We do not take this action lightly, but we have taken an oath to defend the Constitution. And unlike President Trump, we understand that our duty, first and foremost, is to protect the Constitution and to protect the interests of the American people. That is why we must take this solemn step today. Elections are the cornerstone of democracy and are foundational to the rule of law. But the integrity of our next election is at risk from a president who has already sought foreign interference in the 2016 and 2020 elections and who consistently puts himself above country. That is why we must act now. I want to turn now to Chairman Schiff, who will explain the evidence that supports these articles and the need for us to act with such urgency today. Okay, and if you want to watch the rest of that video, we will have a link for you on the Riley King Network Facebook page after this news report. And now let's take a look and see what our local politicians in New Hampshire said about this. U.S. Rep. Chris Pappas praises promises to reveal articles of impeachment free of political consideration. First term Democrat stops short of saying whether he supports impeaching Trump. Hass and Shaheen call for a fair process. U.S. Rep. Chris Pappas promised Tuesday to review the articles of impeachment unveiled by House Democrat leaders without political consideration, calling it a somber and serious day in our nation's history. Pappas, serving his first term representing New Hampshire's first congressional district, has not yet said if 
he will vote to impeach President Donald Trump. The Manchester Democrat is running for a second term in a district that Trump won in 2016. Pappas said he is focusing on his job as a member of Congress while weighing the impeachment articles and related evidence. The House Judiciary Committee is expected to vote on the articles this week, and the full House could vote next week if Trump is impeached. A trial will be held in the U.S. Senate with senators sitting as jurors and considering whether Trump should be removed from office. A two-thirds majority vote would be required to remove the president. Also today, U.S. Senator Maggie Hassan and Jean Shaheen provided their views of the proceeding ahead saying they support a fair trial and fair process if the matter goes on to the Senate. See the two Democrats' comments below. And I'll let you guys read the rest of the comments, what Papa said and the other senators said. And there you go. If you want to read those comments and see that article again, we will share it with you on the Riley King Network Facebook page. And that does it for my evening news report right here on the Riley King Network. Have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another news report. Good night and bye, everyone.